What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about the one-two punch method to eliminate blackbeard algae. So before we get into the video, I do have to put up a disclaimer to please use this form of algae treatment at your own discretion. Some people have come and said that it does affect shrimp, snails, and sensitive fish negatively, um, resulting with possible death, as well as some sensitive plants like jungle val, anacharis, marimo moss balls. So please use this at your own discretion and really only if it's a last ditch effort. It does work, but it is a little tough on tank inhabitants. But that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. This one-two punch method was originally discovered over on plantedtank.net back in 2004 by a user named Dark Cobra. So I'll give my credit there since he's the one that came up with this and I'll leave a link in the description down below if you guys want to read the full write-up on the Blackbeard Algae one-two punch. So essentially the one-two punch combines two common algae treatments that we have in the aquarium hobby. The first one being uh, hydrogen peroxide. You can dose three milliliters per gallon maximum of 3% hydrogen peroxide in an aquarium as an algae treatment. Usually when I'm treating algae, I'm only dosing one milliliter per gallon and it usually does pretty well. Um, basically what it does is it interacts with organic substances in the aquarium, kills the algae, and basically then breaks down into oxygen and water. So relatively safe to use this in the aquarium, works pretty good for algae treatment. The second punch is your Flourish Excel. Now, if you're not familiar with Flourish Excel, it's advertised as a liquid carbon, um, but it is more of an algicide because it contains a chemical called glutaraldehyde, which is a biocide, but with the amounts that we're using in the aquarium, um, it only really affects your simple celled plants, which is going to be your algaes, as well as your jungle valves, anacharis, and marimo moss balls. So you want to be careful using this with sensitive plants but it does a really good job at treating algae. So basically what happens is if you are treating algae repetitively with these items, um, those algaes can build up tolerances against them, right? So what this guy has essentially done is he's created a method to combine the two of them so that they work in hand in hand. Now, effectively, what happens is hydrogen peroxide is capable of stabilizing the glutaraldehyde at a 90% efficiency in aquatic environments. So the peroxide is stabilizing the glutaraldehyde so that it is able to stay at a stronger potency for a longer amount of time in the aquarium versus the short amount of time that it normally has, making it much more effective. Now, to do the one-two punch, right, what you're going to do is you're first going to dose hydrogen peroxide. So you're going to dose three milliliters per gallon of hydrogen peroxide, and you're going to get that in your aquarium and you're going to increase flow. Now, before you dose the hydrogen peroxide, if you have any filter media that you don't wanna have the peroxide interacting with, because it could potentially hurt your beneficial bacteria colonies, Make sure you remove them, put them in a bucket of aquarium water, but leave the filter running because you're gonna need the flow, right? So that being said, dose the peroxide, get it in your aquarium, make sure you up the flow. If you have power heads or something like that, put them in there, get that flow going. You want that peroxide to interact with as much of the blackbeard algae as you can because you're only gonna have about 20 minutes. So get your flow up, get the water moving around, make sure that it comes in contact with all the algae after 20 minutes, reduce the flow, do a 50% water change, reduce the peroxide potency down to 1.5 milliliters per gallon by doing that 50% water change, and then fill your tank back up, dechlorinate, whatever you have to do, as if you were doing a standard water change. Once you're done with the peroxide treatment, the algae is now susceptible, much more so, to the glutaraldehyde in the Flourish Excel. So once you've done your water change, you're going to add your Flourish Excel at five milliliters per 10 gallons, which is the initial dose stated on the back by the manufacturer. So five milliliters per 10 gallons into the aquarium and let it go. So the flow in the aquarium is gonna move that glutaraldehyde around, move the Excel around, and the peroxide is going to help stabilize it so it's going to have a much more potent effect on your blackbeard algae. 
So that is essentially the one-two punch, and it does work very well. Um, I've done it in two of my tanks, my goldfish tank. I newly rescaped it. It had a blackbeard algae before, and the blackbeard algae came back. Um, but luckily, it's all fake plants, so I didn't really have to worry about it. So I dosed the one-two punch, and after about three days, the algae started turning red, which shows that it's been affected by it, and it is dying. So I did the same thing in my angel tank here, which was getting overrun with blackbeard algae. Now, this tank did have jungle val in it, and I really didn't want to dose it, but the blackbeard algae was just running rampant, and my jungle vals were like seven feet tall. They looked really nice, um, but unfortunately they had blackbeard algae all over it, so I dosed this. It did end up destroying the leaves on those plants, um, so I trimmed them back. Hopefully they do come back but time will tell. But I'll show you guys that tank here in a little bit and show you guys the blackbeard algae, how it's turning red and dying off. So um, that's basically how you dose this. So let me show you the results. All right guys, so here's my tank, 55 gallons with my angels in here. Um, and if you can see, there's a lot of particulate floating around in the water, which is a lot of dead blackbeard algae as well as pieces of my jungle val from when I trimmed it out. So if we get in close here, you can see that there was blackbeard algae all over the glass uh, as well as on the plants. And you can see it has all turned red, which is a good sign. That means it is dying. Now it doesn't seem to have negatively affected my java moss as that is still growing. The Apontagetan, uh that did take a little bit of damage on some of the leaves um, as well as the Amazon sword here but these are older leaves as you can see the newer leaves are still nice and green so I don't know if that was necessarily the one-two punch um, or just old leaves dying off from the blackbeard algae being on them. But uh, snails, I have Malaysian trumpet snails in here. They don't seem to have been affected at all. Um, the fish weren't affected at all. Everybody is fine. Both male and female bristlenose are fine. And the sponge filter I had in here, I had to leave it in here because of the blackbeard algae that was on it. But you can see all the blackbeard algae that was on there is red also. So overall, the treatment does seem like it has worked. And I'm fairly happy with the, with the results. And I am hoping for a full recovery on my jungle valve, which is why I did not pull them out. But as you can see, some of the leaves are very wilted and not too happy right now. So we'll see what happens. I'll give an update on these plants in a later video, and we'll see if they recover. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Blackbeard Algae 1-2 Punch. Um, like I said, it seems to have worked out pretty well for me, so hopefully if you guys need to use this method, it works for you as well. So uh, thank you guys for watching Trafish Aquatics, and I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.